when tamil nadu was going through a sort of power crisis kodam kodam power project was commissioned and now it's almost 4 years it's time to make a balance sheet of its performance we have with us dr vt padmanabhan who has been studying and researching on this welcome sir we when uh, this uh, kudam kudam project was commissioned not only tamil nadu the the entire country was sort of uh, bogged down with lot of expectations expectations that here is a project which is going to uh, solve all of our power crisis and it is it i mean whatever threats were discussed with regard to a nuclear reactor it is not there because it is something which is most modern and we all welcomed it uh it's since 3 4 years now in its operation uh what is your uh, i know what's your evaluation the first reactor at the kodangulam nuclear power plant was connected to the grid in october 2013 it's now almost four and a half years it has been in operation the second reactor has been in operation for one and a half years so we have six years of reactor experience a long enough period to assess the performance of the reactor and also project its future so my team did the performance analysis of the reactor in 2016 we showed that during the since this grid connection it has produced only less than half the electricity it should have generated this finding has been confirmed by a more detailed study by the control and auditor general of india which was released in december 2017 the experience of 2017 and the past four months of this year are not different from what was till now 2016 so the reactor is going the same way it has been going since october 2013 now as i see it the honeymoon is over mm-hmm. everybody was very excited about the biggest power generating generator in, in india especially those who are in the electricity business electricity generators and consumers both now you can see this in a recent meeting held by the southern regional power committee which is part of the electricity generation uh, regulatory board of india they have their headquarters in in bangalore and they cover all the generating units of south india telangana andhra pradesh tamil nadu pondicherry karnataka and kerala the meeting uh, in the meeting the all the uh, owners of the all the representatives from various generating units like the private sector the public sector government everybody participates and they discuss their problems and resolve the issues uh, recently a meeting was of kodangulam nuclear npcl was held a special meeting of all npcl units all npcl means kaiga kalpakam and kodangulam because they had special conditions special problems because of this they were being shut down which was uh, creating problems for the distribution companies in this meeting the representatives from npcl said that all the units of npcl are not problematic 
and he gave the examples of kaiga which generated which, which had a record of 522 days of continuous operation without any break then he said added that it is this there are two imported reactors which have had some problems because when there is an equipment failure the spares have to come from abroad and there has been delays due to that so there are two things in this one is that the imported reactors the he did not name russian reactors but you know the only reactors in 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 southern uh, southern india which are imported are uh, kodangulam and russian reactors important uh, kodangulam reactors are prone to frequent equipment failures one issue he said second the spares have to come from russia and that and because of this there's an additional delay in getting this reactors back to generation now what are these equipment failures and how they are tackling it in the second phase of our study after the performance audit we looked into the safety or what is called we went for the safety audit the methodology involved study of all the tenders which have been issued by kk and pp since 2012 we have studied some 500 tenders and 200 nomination work orders and purchase orders and this study reveals that there's hardly any equipment or fixtures in kodangulam which is free or, or which is good or free from malfunction mal- Now I give you the first example of a major equipment going faulty is the reactor coolant pumps. There are four reactor coolant pumps in Kodangulam, one reactor. And this is very important that it this pump takes out the heat generated in, inside the pressure vessel to the steam generator from where steam is generated and then it goes to the uh, The, the, the turbine generator where the electricity is generated. This is very important for the safety of the reactor because if it is not functioning properly, the heat will not be removed out of the reactor. It can get ho- overheated and it can explode. So, immediately after the hot run trial of 2011, the, there was an accident in Kodagura in which this was heavy noise was heard which was what woke up the local communities there was no mention of this accident they said that steam was leaking and that that steam leak was loud enough and people woke up and it was not steam leak it took nearly 12 months for the coolant pump to become operational this is not done anywhere in the world if reactor coolant pump is not working or any of its equipment are not functioning well that has to be returned to the producer and a new pump has to be installed this is what the chinese did with the american company their reactor coolant pump was also defective immediately returned it to america and then after 3 years they got it back in india that is not the case russian experts came and russian spares came and then they were working for 12 uh, 12 months to get it repaired. Now, until now, that is from 2011 to 2018, reactor coolant pumps have been under repair or overall for eight times. Every year there is, a, there is one overhauling and one spares are being repaired and all the spares come from Russia and we have to pay in dollars for it. Reactor coolant pump is not the only item that has been repaired. The, the, there is this reactor pressure vessel that is what we reported in 2012 that the pressure vessel has got uh, well joints which were not in the original design they did not deny the existence of welding but they said that it is safe there is no problem with the welds 
This has also been confirmed recently by the controller and the general authority. Now, within the reactor uh, pressure vessel, you have a more complicated equipment, which is known as reactor vessel internals. The fuel assemblies are located in it. The second item which was repaired extensively was the reactor vessel internal. These repairs took place in 2013, from February 2013 to October, uh, some three, four, five, six months. Experts from Germany came, experts from Croatia came, experts from Russia came, and there were Indian NPCL engineers also working. The third item is the reactor pressurizer. This, there is, each reactor has got one pressurizer and which is very important for safety. It is also located inside the reactor building. There are 27 heaters in the pressurizer. And these heaters have an, uh, have an important function of boiling the water to increase the pressure when the pressure inside the reactor coolant system goes down. When the pressure inside the cooling co coolant increases, then the water inside the pressurizer is cooled. So these heaters were not functioning. Even before commissioning, during the initial test, they found that 18 pressurizer heaters were deficient. So what they did was well, they, they, they replaced the pressure heaters of the first reactor from the second reactor. And NPCIL sought information about companies in India who could probably repair it. They finally found that a company based in Baro Surat, Gujarat, will do it. <laughs> they dispatched one heater to the Surat Beach factory for repair. They could not do it. Finally, I understand that <coughs> India bought and PCL bought these heaters from Ukraine. The Russians did not replace it. See, it is quite <coughs> surprising, rather shocking. So when this Kudam Kudam project was commissioned, people like Abdul Kalam, they said that, see, we, we are bringing in the best in the world, third generation technology, and which is comparable with all Western technologies. And uh, the very birth of uh, the, uh, the project is uh, sick. Is it because that something which, which is some obsolete technology was dumped on us or our people did not ensure the quality of the supplies they received? My guess is that the, we have not seen the any document, detailed project report or safety analysis reports of Kodangudu. But whatever little material has been published by insiders and what experience, what information which we received through various studies show that there is a gap between the what is in the design and what the kind of equipments we received from this. So, the, in paper, whatever has been given to in, in India during the initial bar, initial uh, days could have been a better reactor with features of Generation 3. In reality, what we received were equipment and fixtures which were probably manufactured before the Chernobyl accident. Mm -hmm. The case of uh, reactor pressure vessel proves this. And the failures of various equipments at different stages, repeated overalls and repairs of equipment like turbine generator. All this indicate that they are not new, they were 
manufactured probably much earlier. They were lying in the godowns of the Russia's factories. They were refurbished and sent to us. But is it the same technology which was used in Chernobyl? No, it, it can't be the same technology because the reactor types are different. Chernobyl is an RB, RBMK reactor and this is a VVR reactor. These are the reactors which were planned for Soviet Union and other friendly countries before the accident, the Chernobyl accident took place. So these are VVR technologies of pre-1986 design. Now the issue is the technology or uh, the management of uh, the technology here? No, it's not the question of management of technology. It is the question of uh, junk, obsolete equipment, counterfeit equipment coming, coming to India and the uh, quality control wing of NPCL not doing what it was supposed to do, what they claim they are doing. But how do you how do you say that they are all counterfeit and it's a, it's material which is coming from uh, Russia? Because as I as I, as I told you, the pressurized heater has got twenty seven heater elements in it. If eighteen of them are not working, why it is not working? It is not a minor fault which could could have been set right by a technician somewhere. They tried you know, all, all, all throughout the country. They could not repair it. Why is it like this? Why is this reactor coolant pump being repaired several times, sometimes twice a year, overall every two years? Why is it that the, the, the turbine generator had to be overhauled or subjected to major repair and space, change of space 27 times? Even now, the second reactor is down because of the defect of turbine. But this, my te the, the, this technology, is it something which it was sent to India now for the first time or was it also tried in elsewhere? We don't know about the uh, situation elsewhere, but it, in the Indian case, I think it's worse than any, 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 any other system. To know if China's uh, reactors are also functioning <coughs> like this, you must have the proper production statistics. We do not have, have that. We cannot compare Indian situation with Iran because we do not, we do not have any data about how much electricity they, they generated, how many hours they have been functioning. <coughs> But is it the same kind of reactors which they used for uh, power generation there? The, the official claim is that Indian reactor is a, a, a generation higher than that of Chinese and Iranian. They are not generation 3 reactors. India, Indian reactor, they claim, is the first generation 3 BBR reactors. Sir, you were referring about uh, the uh, the dumping of uh, the supplies by uh, Russia. Post Chernobyl, Russia must have uh, supplied similar uh, reactors elsewhere also. Uh, where they have supplied and did they also experience similar problems? And if they had uh, faced such problems, how did they manage it? When the Chernobyl accident took place in 2000, uh, 1986, there were 26 VVR 1000 reactors which were under construction or planned in various Soviet Union and other neighboring countries or communist countries. All these projects were immediately Cancelled, abandoned. Okay. Some of these reactors were almost completed, 75% completed, 50% completed. Many of the equipments were also made. And some of these were rejuvenated and restarted, uh, the projects were restarted in, in, uh, in during late 90s and early 2000, especially in Russia and Ukraine. 
the during the, during this period uh, uh, russia exported two reactors vvr 1000 reactors to china and two reactors to india and one to uh, iran give you one example of an equipment called steam generator there are four steam generators in each of the reactors in kodangulam first reactor there are four steam generators second reactor also has got four steam generators the steam generator was an issue which was raised in the media in india and which was part of the petition filed in the supreme court because the company which was producing steam generators in russia is called zhiopodolsk was getting inferior steel from ukraine for making the uh, steam generators now the steam generators received by the chinese in t- nearly 2003 was in very news because several of the tubes were leaking each steam generator has, has got 10978 tubes through which high pressure steam from the reactor pressure vessel uh, goes into the, into the steam generator and the water outside the tube gets boiled and it becomes steam for the turbine so it is the if if some of these tubes are leaking what it, it means is that there are two things which are dangerous one is the radioactivity will leak the water coming from the reactor pressure vessel is radioactive that will leak into the steam so it will contaminate the uh, turbine generator and also the secondary area second is that the amount of steam generated would be less so your production of uh, generation of electricity will be less the chinese found that all the tubes are not functioning they were leaking so they wrote to the uh, company as attempts to export and said you take it back the russian said no no you see we have some extra uh, tubes in it even if you plug these tubes your production will be normal he said no no we don't need we need 100 uh, all the tubes to be intact and otherwise we will not take so they replaced them now in the indian case the npcl had given a affidavit in the supreme court that our steam generators are very fine there's no problem that was in 2013 abhi uh, we, we have some information about steam generator inspection done by a department of atomic energy laboratory in india this they report that the several of the tubes were leaking and they plugged it and then they conducted various studies about why the leaks where the leaks which place are the leaks and all that and those are reported so the you have similar situation in china and india in china when the chinese scientists found that the tubes are leaking they said we don't need you keep us good steam generator not a leaking steam generator and then they got it after two years of negotiation or whatever it is india did not do that india but why india did not resort to a similar action This is what you see. I don't know whether you see it was in the contract. I don't know what was. We don't know what the contract was like. Like, did it say that whatever we supply to you, you have to accept it? It cannot be so because no commercial contracts are written like that. There's always a, a, a place for quality control, and you're supposed to uh, supply quality stuff. It could have been some, some what, some give and take arrangement. because it is not just one equipment which is failing its major equipments like the turbine generator billions of rupees and it is the key key equipments inside the reactor building these are these are failing these have been found defective so it's a total failure of the quality control department of npcl but did the npcl take uh, did they take things for granted that they could manage with their whatever expertise or 
they had no choice but to accept it they had choice they had choice to reject things which were not good not as per the design and they, they they did not do that and what they did was wherever it was possible to replace the item by local purchase or reverse engineering they did it many many with local firms were approached for doing all these things and they made money and then things may, may were made to work. but the equipment like reactor coolant pump or pressurizer cannot be repaired locally it's a very delicate equipment and the russian pump can only be repaired by the russian engineers so they bring in generation engineers and russian spares for repair of them. see a, a, a supply which has been received from abroad in case it fails either they should return or they should get it repaired they they they, they would be forced to get it repaired locally if there is uh, no warranty see in the case of nuclear uh, equipment the practice worldwide is like you place the order on a company immediately after you place your order your quality control persons visit the company which is producing it for example finland is buying reactors from russia and france F french reactor is almost ready i think they'll be commissioned that will be commissioned next uh, in the, uh, next year or this year <coughs> now the finish regulator goes to the place where this equipment is manufactured the reactor pressure vessel for uh, finland's reactor was made in japan so there are quality uh, engineers flew to japan and then they were there to see what is the type of metal they are going to use The, and check it if if it is within the quality uh, they, standards they, and then they they inspect the welding process the entire process of manufacturing right from the raw material stage billet stage welding and then finishing your representative is there who checks it this is the issue of major equipment major equipment means pressure vessel polar crane the steam generator pressurizer these are all major equipment it is not like so they, somebody manufactures some item somewhere and then they ship it <coughs> there are the sundry items like valves small pipes and all these things which is manufactured somewhere and then they bring it here and the new are uh, you uh, 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 these are subjected to non destructive examination and all you can see whether it is working well is all within the quality and all. this is how nuclear plants are being built all major equipment uh, ma manufacturing is done under the watchful eyes of the re regulator as well as the generating company that is npcil but no such thing was done in the case of india in theory there was in in in, the, in india atomic energy regulatory board is not at all responsible for this thing. they don't go to the company which manufactures items so atomic energy regulatory board has got only limited functions as far as quality control is concerned that is written in the code according to the written procedures in india npcil quality control wing should have been functioning doing all these things and in in reports they have made they say that engineers Uh, NPCL engineers were posted in Saint Petersburg and Moscow, and they were doing all these works like ex looking at the raw materials and then welding processes and all. That. But in reality, they didn't. They, they did not do any of these things. Where we have documentary evidence now. Just so they did not visit and they did not ensure. <coughs> they might have visited pl the plant. First of all, if they visited, we should not have got reactor pressure vessel with welds. Okay. We should not have got a polar crane which was shivering when <laughs> under the normal load. We should not have got this coolant pumps which was like this. We should not have got this pressurizer heaters were not functioning.
So besides the suppliers, the culprit is NPCL itself. Suppliers, you can say as a supplier, if you have got to some spare item, you try to... Why we blame the supplier? That is not our problem. Our problem is why we got it. We got it because the person who should have been there to check the quality of the equipment did not do its work well. Sir, you are referring about the supplies of... the defective supplies of vital parts. Uh, besides the cost to overrun, did, did it have any kind of impact on the functioning of uh, the reactor and particularly the people who were engaged in the kind of repairs they were doing? In one instance, we just got significance from the point of view of the health of the workers and the neighborhood is a fuel failure accident which happened on uh, in the Republic Day of 2014. On 26th January, when the operators were trying to raise the reactor power from 500 to 750 megawatt some fuel loads were damaged and because of the fuel load damage iodine and other radioactive fission products inside the fuel rods got leaked into the fuel uh, in, into the coolant water and leakage was put 80 times the normal leakage. This is significant from the point of view of the health of workers and the people living in the neighborhood because various other compartments of the reactors would be contaminated and then finally there will be higher load of radioactive solid based and liquid based from the According to the information I have, this accident had its impact on the reactor coolant for six months. Other things we do not know. No other accident has come to our life, our information. Uh, so, but in case of an accident, there are certain equipment which have to do key functions. Uh, the polar crane is one such a, an equipment. This crane has a capacity of 350 tons uh, and it is, it, happened, it, it is located under the dome of the reactor. So anything which has to be taken out of the reactor building or any, any equipment which need to be taken inside the reactor building, the polar crane is used. It is also used in the, during the removal of spent fuel from the reactor uh, spent fuel pond away from reactor uh, spent fuel location. You know the capacity, nameplate capacity of the polar crane is 350 tons. It has to lift equipment which is 322 tons. There is a reactor pressure vessel and other equipment which are of lower uh, tonnage. Now, it the first reactor's crane came to India in 2005. After its arrival, they did the capacity checking and then according to the report published in by AERB, the crane with a capacity of 350 tons started shivering with the capacity of when, when, when the load was 322 tons, which it was underperforming. Because of this underperformance, for two years, AERB did not give the consent to erect it. It was lying outside. Then I don't know, the AERB report itself says that there was a consultation between the Russian Federation and NPCL and it was sorted out. And AERB gave consent or it was forced to give the consent for erection of uh, polar uh, uh, crane for uh, shifting the equipments like reactor pressure vessel and 
steam generators. The capacity remains the same. So, and then I recently read a report of, uh, written by erection engineers of Kodam Kodam that would how they commissioned the polar crane. There's no mention about shivering. They say that they tested a load of 385 tons and then did this uh, st uh, static and dynamic test. They were all functioning then. Everything was functioning then. Textbook precision. And then they also said that <coughs> these tests were witnessed by the experts from manufacturers, that is Russia and NPC. ARB was nowhere near the picture. The author of this report, who is a senior QC engineer of NPCL <coughs> is now the overall in charge of the quality control wing of reactor number three and four. This is alarming. See, when uh, there is a real problem, instead of acknowledging the problem, there is an attempt to hush it up and. Uh, People who, have, who hushed it up, now they are heading the, uh, the, the, the QC department. And what could be the consequence? The, as I know, these two reactors itself is a license for catastrophic accidents. Four means twice that, six means three times, eight means four times that. The reactors are not safe. We have enough evidence and NPCL engineers know that. NPCL operators know that reactors are not safe. They are extremely cautious about operating it. So I am very confident that there won't be an accident because the operators know that this is the weakness of it. The operators know that they cannot trust this reactor, so whenever they are doing anything, they will think five or ten times what to do. No risk will be taken by them. But it doesn't mean that the operators will be able to, in a, to control, control the situation all the time. Was there any accountability fixed on uh, the messing up of the supply and things related to that. But they do not recognize that. They say that everything is in, in a in okay condition. And wherever they could not give any reply to uh, controller and order general, they did not reply to the uh, to their relatives, in spite of repeated reminders. Controller general asked specific questions. What were the equipments and which were the equipments and the fixtures which are damaged? during the commissioning stage or during the warranty period of operation? No answer. No answer. Don't you think that this, the whole uh, setup is, uh, is in a way threatening the life and uh, uh, livelihood of the people around? Of course it is. There was an accident at Kodangulam in, on 6th May 2014. And we have written about it earlier. This was in which six workers, three permanent workers and three temporary workers received major injuries and they were treated in various hospitals. They were flown to a high, a super specialty hospital in Chennai. All these things. So, this I think was a pipe burst accident and this was due to a process called a flow accelerated corrosion of the pipes. The first accident of this kind happened in the US reactor in Surrey in 1986 where a similar burst of uh, pipe in the secondary system sent hot water around the uh, workplace and three to three or four workers were killed immediately. It was one of the 
costly accidents in, in nuclear power plants. Six months after this accident, the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission came out with an advisory that all the pipes, steel used in the pipes of feed water system should have a minimum of co concentration of chromium. There was no chromium in the pipes used before. Similar accidents also happened in uh, India, Rawat Bhatta and other reactors, in Japan and other reactors. And in India, after this, after studying the samples of the pipes which was which were broken in Rawat Bhatta, the Baba Atomic Research Center uh, issued an advisory to all NPCL units that all these pipes should be replaced by uh, steel which is rich in chromium, at least 2 to 3 percent chromium there should be in there. And the SK Jain, who is the chairman and managing director of, of NPCL during the last decade, made a presentation in, in, a, in Bangalore saying that all the NPCL units, the feeder and uh, coolant channel pipes were replaced with chromium rich uh, steel pumps uh, pipes, pipes pipes that 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 project was completed in 2006 around the same time pipe pi pi pipelines in kodangulam were also being laid and the pipes used in kodangulam feed water system as a maximum concentration of 0.3 percent chromium. This is not chromium which is put as an alloy in the steel. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, the, uh, the chromium which is usually present in the iron ore. Its con maximum concentration is 3 percent, 0.3 percent. Usually, Russian other Russian studies show that the Russian pipes manufactured earlier had lower concentration of. Uh, Chromium. So, in my opinion, the Kodangulam reactor would be the first nu uh, reactor, a nu nu nuclear reactor, and also electric stations made of pipes with chromium deficient uh, steel. But it also this also shows that the steels were manufactured before the first accident in the US or before the scientific community knew the vulnerability of the pumps, pipes without uh, high chromium content. I don't know if the same kind of steel is being used for third or fourth reactors, but what I know is that there were 36 tenders floated by NPCA between 2012 and 2018 for replacement of pipes. Replacement of pipes is happening even now. There are tenders which will run till 2019. Pipes are being replaced. replaced. So, thousands of tons of Russian steel is lying in the junkyard of Kodungur.